Hello, welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries. Back in England and it's uh, sunny, which is great. So we're back in the shed. Normal service has resumed, you'll be pleased to know. So while I was away, the shed fairy, Mr. Bob, has been busy. The gearbox casing has been drilled and tapped to take the end plates. And that's um, no mean feat because this mandrel here is a beautiful fit and it will only fit if the center line is concentric between this side and that side of the gearbox case but this actual hole for this shaft isn't concentric with the center of these plates so there needed to be some sort of careful jigging out to make that a nice fit now the camera seems to go nuts when i hold it like that so i'll try not to do that too often so we've got this dummy shaft in we've got the gearbox case drilled and tapped and that's great and the next thing we turn our attention to on the gearbox is the gear selector mechanism. Now the gear selector, if you recall, these are the selector forks and they slide along this shaft. This shaft needs to be held between the two end plates of the gearbox, which means that there needs to be a blind hole drilled into that side of this plate and a blind hole drilled into this side of this plate so the hole doesn't come all the way through that hole needs to be the right depth and this shaft needs to be the right length so that when you bolt it together this shaft is trapped and it doesn't move not only that but it needs to be the exact distance away from the center of this shaft so that these selectors sit nicely on the dogs of which they move and it also needs to be absolutely parallel with this shaft so let's assume for some um, just for now that we've able, been able to do that, we then need to bring in the second shaft, which is the shaft that moves to actually move the selector forks and change the gear. This piece here, we'd started to make before I left, so the shed fair has been busy on that as well. That has two holes drilled in it that locate on those two spigots that come off these two selector forks. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll assemble the final shaft We'll drop those on so we know the exact distance these need to be apart. Then we'll drill the holes in here so that can drop in place. This shaft that moves takes this assembly with it because it's locked on with a grub screw and it, it moves the selector forks with it so we can select the gears. So this shaft also needs to be located in holes in the end plates of the gearbox. Only this time the hole goes all the way through the end plate on this side and all the way through the end plate on the other side so that the gear selector mechanism whatever I decide to fit on the end of here can slide that shaft that shaft also needs to be parallel to this shaft and parallel to that shaft but they all have to be drilled and marked out from inside an enclosed space so there's a bit of head scratching going on and we've come up with this plan we're going to use some all thread or stud in three of the six holes so they're at 120 degrees apart by putting a nut and a washer on the back of those three bits of all thread in place of the gearbox casing, we can adjust very precisely the distance between this plate and this plate. We can also make sure that the two faces, the two faces are true to one another and we'll be able to see inside what's going on. So then we can fit that over the dogs. We can put a short version of this through. I'm glad that's finished. Bit of a, bit of a noisy thing, wasn't it? Um, we can fit a short rod through and just centre pop when we've turned down a, a point on the end of it on the inside of this plate with it all happening. And the nice thing about that is that if we keep that set up, we can set up the entire gearbox, check that it works, check the clearances because you'll be able to see what's going on. And we can do a bit of a video at the end of it of how the gearbox functions when it's complete. And I think that'd be quite interesting to see. The gearbox itself is sitting on the gearbox plates. They're obviously rotated 90 degrees because that's a nice way to hold the gearbox firmly on the bench. They still need to be drilled and tapped once we've decided um, where it's going to be in the bike but we could really do with the bike frame back before we attach this to these plates so we can fine-tune the orientation of the box in the frame so there's a fair bit going on with the gearbox but as of Monday we're going to be finally assembling that engine over there so the gearbox will probably be put in a box for a week or two while that engine gets assembled 
Uh, the piece that's just fell on the floor is another dummy shaft. I'm just going to knock up the dummy shaft for Matt because um, Matt's asked for another dummy shaft between centres to practice cutting the splines and uh, I think that's a very good idea. So I'll hopefully get that back to Matt today. So that's what's going on at the moment in the Project Hercules Shed, or well, that's what you've missed in the past week. Um, as usual, thank you for watching and more updates will follow.